Shadow Light, 14. As I turned the corner of Merchant's Way, not far from the towering council building, I nearly collided with Bron and Brog. Snapping my fingers, I cast a minor illusion to change my appearance, instantly cutting my full-dressed azure dress into two swathes of silken cloth to cover my essentials. It was a game I had played in our village to entice the twins into giving me a bit more of their make attention, and now I intended to change my attire often, after Thomas telepathically informed me recently that he would lead me to Alice, to a murder scene. As the towering warriors stared downward, our gazes met, and an unspoken tension sparked by the buzz of conversation and the passing townsfolk. Beneath the radiant white sunlit street that suggested an early day hour, we stood stock still together, listening to citizens gossip loudly of the brazen murder of Councilwoman Penelope's daughter. The townsfolk knew nothing, not yet, of the even more recent and equally justified slaying of Captain Menden and the destruction of two golems, whose existence held only a sliver of value to human life according to kingdom law. I knew the towering twins fellow survivors of my village's massacre, had also been updated telepathically through Thomas of Alice's move to eliminate our evil enemies. Bron spoke first, asking me, How fare you, Agnes? It was a question, yet it meant much more to me. In our village, Bron had often asked me the same simple question during a time when I was a different person. It was a time when I did not have a cancerous lump in my breast, a time when a demon had not murdered my dear adopted mother, or murdered my doggedly loyal fiancé, or slaughtered all the people in my village. The twins and I shared the same vengeance if you mission to end, the existence of the demon Mobius with the aid of our powerful new allies, Thomas, Flammer, Wagen and Mustag. With a wide smile I told Bron, I fare well, thank you. Tell your sister I shall visit her soon enough. We shall, answered Brog. Mustag and the three of us are meeting with the council before Flammer, yourself, and Wagen shall meet with them. As the twins stared at me to silently gauge my emotional well-being, I smiled and shrugged to show them I still felt confident in our potential meeting with our enemies. Then I added, We must play this game with the council, lads, since the common folk of Border Town do not yet know their council, most likely supports Mobius. Bron nodded swiftly. Understood. Thomas's telepathic voice entered my mind. Alice is close. I shall continue leading you to her. Do not tarry any more. I stormed through the wide expanse of stone view towards the alleyway Thomas had named as her last location. She had been attired in a fur bikini, artfully stitched, to respectfully cover the nimble-bodied former golem girl's chest while exposing her slender midriff. Her once ordinary oak short bow now shined with an emerald gleam more radiant than my own eyes. I found Alice sitting calmly on the ground before two fallen armoured golems, their helms having rolled off their pierced skulls to reveal the bearded faces of two rugged-looking men in the prime of their youth. On the cobblestone alleyway directly behind calmly postured Alice, I spied upon Captain Menden's lifeless face, a trinkle of crimson running from the corner of his mouth. Greetings, mother, Alice said to me in a high-pitched, excited voice of a girl that differed greatly from the monotone voice I had created her with as a golem. Behind Alice towered a warrior in full golden plate armour, the gold plate male known by all in border town to belong to Mustag. She is safe, the warrior assured me his deep voice muffled behind his full-faced metal helm. Mustag, I exclaimed in a nearly pleading voice. Mustag ignored my surprise. Agnes, go meet with your other-world man, if he is even a man. The outworlder awaits you patiently at stone view. Get Alice away from here before you both are discovered, I told him, pointing at Mendon's body and the golems. I shall, he assured me. Now go. I spun on my heels and took long-legged strides towards Stoneview. Accustomed to being ogled by men of all ages, I noticed that larger groups of men began filtering into the street known as Merchant's Way, 
not far from the narrow, unnamed alleyway where I discovered Mustag, Alice and Mendon's body. Hoping that Mustag had enough sense to either lead or carry Alice from the alleyway, I lowered my head and veered through or walked around the groups of bewildered men. Mendon was found murdered, I overheard one man exclaim in bewilderment behind me. I found Wagan seated shirtless in stone view. Behind him rested the human-like, inanimate golem statue of a muscular giant who resembled the creator, known as God on Earth. Wigan looked up with a smile, Toreg. 